Welcome back to EIS Alaska. Well, we're in the fish hold, and uh, it's just kind of the continuation of our, our shaft project, um, replacing this intermediate shaft. So there's a lot of questions, a lot of comments on the previous videos, and so I just kind of wanted to go over a few things with you and uh, share a little bit of why we're doing what we're doing the whole purpose behind it, um, and uh, I guess what our goal is when we finish here. So, uh, many of you guys know already that there used to be a shaft right here. So there was a coupling just like this one that goes to this, which is called a tail shaft. This is a shaft that exits the vessel and has a propeller attached to it. And there was a coupling on there. And then there was another shaft that went from here with the same kind of coupling flipped around and bolted to this one that went forward all the way through the shaft alley into the engine compartment and it was attached to reduction gear on the main. And so this tail shaft right here is a stainless alloy. It's probably like an Aquamet or an Aqualoy. It's hard to say the exact type of it because I don't know offhand. Um, it's not in survey. But at any rate, it's a stainless alloy that is resistant to corrosion and crevice pitting and generally holds up well in a marine environment. The intermediate shaft, the one that we replaced on the other hand, was not. It was made of carbon steel. And that's perfectly fine to use that in this application. Uh, it's been used on vessels of many different sizes for many, many years. Um, in this case, it was just time to replace it. And so there was a couple of different reasons that we decided to do that. Um, number one, first and foremost, is our safety out on the water. Uh, shafts do break. And um, if that ever happens, it usually doesn't happen when you're in the harbor or you're just putting over to the fuel dock or to the cannery to, to deliver. It either happens in the middle of the best season that you'll ever have or happens at the worst time, like in a storm when you're going around a cave. And so, um, first and foremost, that was in the back of our mind. Uh, this shaft was heavily scaled. The coupling was heavily corroded. It probably would have never broke apart, but the shaft certainly could have twisted up off at some point. Um, it was originally just shy of two and a half inches, and the minor diameter on the shaft back here where it hit the coupling after we knocked all the scale off was just slightly over two inches. I think it was about two and an eighth of an inch. So it had lost about three eighths of an inch of material over the years. Uh, that's just the one spot that we actually knocked all the corrosion off of. There was 13 feet of it that we don't know the condition of. Same thing, it, it had a, a wrapping on it and it was heavily scaled underneath causing that wrapping to expand. Um, that could have been contributing to a lot of vibration in the vessel. I'm interested to see how that's gonna work out after we get the new one back in and we take it out for uh, sea trials again. Um, I do know that when we sped up the vessel to 14, 1500 RPM, there was a lot of vibration in the stern of the vessel. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if that goes away somewhat or if that is just prop action. We don't know yet. But that was one reason to replace that. Um, the other reason to replace that is that we're gonna make this fish hold so we can tank it, fill it with water, um, that we can fill it with raw fish that are wet and all of that uh, fish slime and geary and water, it needs to go somewhere. So if this shaft alley that we're standing in right now is not sealed, well, it all runs forward and it goes right through these holes up here that lead into the engine room. And one of them is for the shaft. So that, uh, this uh, fitting right here, is where the shaft enters the, the engine room. Um, this isn't sealed, it doesn't tighten around the shaft or anything to make a watertight seal. And so you get water pouring through there. Uh, you'd also get it going through some of these other holes that had miscellaneous pipes and wires and whatnot going through them. So that's an issue. 
So what we do is we have a cover on here that is sealed. It's sealed permanently. Where you need to access things like your bearings, and this is one of them. <clears throat> this is called a Babbitt bearing. It doesn't have roller bearings in it or ball bearings, although they do make them that way. But this has a Babbitt material, which is uh, it's a tin alloy, much like lead. And you can re-pour this. You can melt it, and you can re-pour it into this. And that's something that we will be doing. But it basically just has a layer of tin in here. And this is your bearing. This, is, this will wear before your shaft will. And so um, this is a split one, so you can take this off, you can unbolt it, you can get it out from underneath your shaft, and you can service this without removing your shaft. So um, we'll have a Babbitt bearing here, we'll have a Babbitt bearing in the back, about where the one is now, and then we also have the shaft packing in the back. All of these areas need to be accessible, and so our shaft alley will be sealed, and in these areas right here, we'll have a hatch that you can remove, a watertight hatch that's simple and easy to remove. Um, once again, very standard in our fishing industry, uh, so there's no weird thing going on there. We're not inventing anything. We're not reinventing anything. It's just tried and true uh, operation that has been in place for a long time. So. Um, so yeah, so over these, these battle bearings and also our shaft packing, we'll be able to access them through a watertight hatch. That's very easy to pop off. On the fishtail, we have the same thing. It's one single bolt. You remove it, you can get in there and tighten up the, the packing gland for the shaft. Um, takes about two minutes to take it on and off. It's very simple. So you'll see more of that as we go along. Uh, also, where we made these cuts right here, we'll be putting sumps in, and that's basically just an area that will be sealed also. It will come down, it will allow all the water, all of the dirty to flow into these areas, and then we'll have a pump in our engine room. Uh, we'll have plumbing that comes through the wall and drops into here where we can suck all that out. So if we have water in our tank and we're pumping it out, that's where it'll go. That's where the suction line will be. If we're washing in here, all the gurry, all the water will come down. It'll fill these sumps. Once again, we can pump it out. Mm -hmm. That just makes it a really nice, easy collection point. It's the lowest spot in the boat. You don't have standing, pooling water that gets, uh, it's hard to pump out or anything like that. And it's a really nice way to get your boat really good and clean when you're done. So. That'll be done. And then uh, the other reason that we're replacing the shaft too, and all of this kind of goes hand in hand. There's a, there's a lot here. And uh, the other reason is that we needed to split this fish hole in half. Um, roughly the volume of this full of water would weigh probably about 55,000 pounds. If you completely fill this whole space with water, 55,000 pounds of weight. So, not knowing the boat, not knowing how it trims out, how it handles that much weight, how it sits, we thought it was prudent to divide the fish hold in half. Well, we're actually dividing it into a third right here and two thirds forward. So, we needed to do that so when we start to fish salmon and we're using RSW, which is refrigerated seawater, you fill your fish hold completely full of it, and then you displace the water with fish as you catch them, we needed to know that the vessel was gonna sit good in the water and not be too heavy and not have the decks at or below the surface of the water creating stability issues. So this is the best way to do it, is to compartmentalize your vessel. There's also a couple of other reasons that it's advantageous for us. Um, number one, this back hold, you can put ice back here. So if you need some extra ice during your trip, whether we're fishing for rockfish or cod or whatever, we can put ice back here. We have it available. You can also use it for dry storage back here if you wanted because it's separate and it's sealed from the front one. Uh, 
same goes vice versa. You know, if you wanted to, to do something different up forward, like freeze fish, you could use this back one to hold your raw product until you're ready to freeze it. So there's just a lot of different reasons to do that, and, and that's one of it. That being said, we have to put in a bulkhead right here. And to do that, we really needed to replace the shaft first, because once this bulkhead goes in, once this new shaft alley cover goes down and it's sealed, this becomes much harder to remove. Right now we can do it with the boat in the water, which we are. It's completely removed when we're in the water. But if we had to do this later, we'd have to pull the boat out onto land and we'd have to take the rudder off and everything would have to be pulled through the shaft log and out the back of the boat. So it becomes much, much more problematic after the fact to do this. So um, the rest of the video is just going to be us down here. Uh, we're cutting apart the old coupling. We're talking about what we're doing, um, trying to figure out our plan, kind of. It, uh, it all took place over about a month time. Uh, it was kind of a slow process for several reasons. We were still fishing. So that was taking up a lot of our time. We also had some problems with um, getting the correct measurements for this. Uh, when we first removed it, you'll see that there's still a column right here and a partial bulkhead in place. That's been removed now, so we can get to the hull and we can tab in our new bulkhead. But we didn't know exactly where this bulkhead was going to land at the time, and so. We were actually really in a big hurry to get the old shaft out, to get the measurements made, to get this information sent off to the guys down in Seattle so they could make us a new shaft. Um, it was actually really stressful. We ran into a lot of problems because this is something that we don't do every day. Um, we made some assumptions that turned out to be wrong, and I'm going to kind of explain that. And uh, in the end, it was for the best that it didn't come off right away, that we didn't get the measurements right away. Because if we had, we would have discovered that that bulkhead landed right on top of this coupling. And that's about the worst place that we possibly could have had it. So this coupling in our new shaft is actually going to be about right here. We do have our new shaft. It is cut. It is on the vessel right now in the crate, and it has <clears throat> new uh, couplings on it. But the new one is going to fall back about in here, I believe. So this one is going to be about right here. The one, the intermediate going forward, it's the same, same coupling, same form factor and everything. It'll be positioned about here and going forward. So this would have actually been too long and, uh, and we would have had to deal with it anyways. And so some of the funny things that kind of happened along the way is that we discovered that, you know, these couplings aren't just universal. You don't just get a coupling and match it to a shaft that's already been machined. You can see these holes right here. These are scallops. That's for these bolts to go through. That, helps prevent this whole thing from twisting on the shaft. It's also keyed. So one of the assumptions that, that I made is that, you know, these holes are equidistant on each side. These are exactly the same. So we figured we could just take this coupling off our main and reuse it back here. Well, it turns out that they're not the same and they don't match up. They're about an eighth of an inch off. There's no way that you can just come in here and grind that away and call it good because then it's going to be sloppy. You want this fit to be good, precision, tight, with no slop. So that's one assumption that we made. That's something that we found out after the fact. And that's something that actually slowed us down on this whole project, getting that final measurement for that shaft. In the end, it worked out good because had we got this on here right away and measured it, we would have came up short and then we would have had to try and figure out how to incorporate this coupling right here where our bulkhead is. 
it would have been problematic. So we're pretty happy about that. So yeah, that's just kind of uh, a review of, of what we're doing here and why we're doing it. Um, I know to a lot of folks this probably seems like a ton of work and you know they maybe they question why we bought a boat like we did. There's a lot of different reasons that we bought this particular boat, why we wanted this particular hull. Um, this is work that we knew we would have to face going into this and so it's no big surprise. Um, the money expenditure doesn't come as a surprise. We knew that we'd have to spend money on this. And so um, we're just happy to be moving forward to this project. The good news is that we still have a boat to fish. We'll continue to work the, fi the fishtail and use it to catch crab and rockfish and cod. And when this vessel's ready, it's ready and we'll fish it. We're not in a big hurry. Um, like I say, we've got a boat still, so that's a, a really nice thing not to be under pressure to get a project done to be able to get this vessel back in service so we can uh, earn our livelihood again. <clears throat> so, yeah. I guess that's kind of it. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, then drop them in the comment section down below and we'll do our best to answer it. And you know, uh, hopefully alleviate any concerns folks might have about what we're doing, um, why we're doing it. If you need some clarification on anything, fire away. And uh, yeah, the rest of the video is just gonna kind of show us going in there and ripping stuff out and wrestling around. All right, guys. Next morning, back with toys. Toy, rather. <laughs> A tool of destruction. I had to pick up Big Red. I'm get in there and get this deal cut. Here and then just cut this flat off and then just come back in. Ah, she's sliding faster, huh? Yeah, I think I built that one. So now the tricky side, I guess. I don't know what to do about this. You just wedge the other side with clamshell it. Huh? Can you just wedge the other side with clamshell it? Yeah, I don't know if it'll snap yet or not. Now 
Now we got to go wrestle the coupling off the other side of uh, the intermediate shaft, the carbon one. So we got to get these bolts out here and then, um, and then we can unbolt it from the gear <coughs> and hopefully slide this thing off. I'm hoping that it's oily and greasy enough that, that, uh, it's not going to be a problem. Well, these guys look a lot better than the other one. At least I can actually see the split in this coupling. So, yeah, that bolt moves. That's a good sign. Twist it. So, yeah, that should come out okay, I think. Um, Worst case scenario, we can always just cut this off in here, and then um, we can we can cut the shaft here. We should be able to get in here with the with the bands on, cut it right here if need be, and then we'll just take this this coupling and the little piece of shaft, and we can go work on it somewhere else. But I'm hoping that we can just slide it back and then be able to to get it off without going through the extra step of of cutting this and then once that's done um, all we really need to do is just break loose uh, intermediate bearing and it's the same thing it's just a two-piece clamshell design take the top half off of it and then, then we should be able to uh, sling the shaft and, and get it and hoist it out um, it's too heavy just to, to manhandle around two of us so we're gonna need to use a a come along and a chain hoist just to to grab onto it. We'll sling it with a couple of lines or something and just kind of pull it back and lift it out. Okay, well, that's a good sign. So we're trying to save this coupling to reuse it because they are quite expensive. They're about, well, I guess by the time it's shipped up here, it's be well over six hundred dollars. So, Okay, so that was the hard part. Mm -hmm. Now for the easy part. Six bolts. It's a very confined, to give you guys a look. Yeah, Here. typical boat stuff. <laughs> yeah, so. so coupling, just a flange off the engine, so. It's a tight fit, but I'll get her. Luckily, we can use the uh, the engine bed here for a nice wrench holder. Uh, that's four. This is the second easy part. The third easy part is going to be putting the coupling off the shaft. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's that's that they're all busted loose, so nice. Alright, well so we'll bring guys back once we finish <laughs> taking the rest of these out. <laughs> I guess I forgot I left it running. Anyway, you get the idea. Get the rest of these out. We the rest comes apart pretty easily. Yeah, I'll just stick a crowbar in there and see if we can just give that a little jiggle and pop that off. Yeah, I can see a tiny space down there on the bottom of it, so that's good. Just lightly pry.
Yep, there it goes. Nice. Yeah, pull it back as far as we can. Get this uh, the coupling up against this bulkhead as close as we can, and then we'll see if we can get on there with uh, with that little puller, okay. and see if that'll work. If not, we'll just have to cut the shaft. Okay, so you can see the pilot bore on that one and that corresponds to the ring off uh, the gear right here and that just ensures that when you register those two together that it runs straight and cr true and concentric to the shaft. Two inches. Two inches. If possible. All righty. Looks good, I think. Who's here? Hey, boo. <laughs> Hi, dear. Oh. Hi. Peekaboo. Hello, viewers. <laughs> <laughs> How it going? Well, better, I guess. Oh, that's good. Um, all these bolts came off easy, just a little, a little bit tight. Yeah, hopefully this comes off here all right. If not, we'll just chop it off and then go wrestle around with it somewhere else. Alrighty. Now maybe we should just put a little heat on it or something, huh? Yeah. I probably should have just had one of these ordered up here already, but oh dear. This whole thing's turning into a fiasco. Don't say that. It's <laughs> not. It's not. It can be worse. Okay. It's true. You're right. Well, I guess I can give it a few more cranks, and if it doesn't seem like it's going to come off easy, then we'll just uh, we'll just cut it off and get it out of here so we can work on it somewhere more comfortably. Yeah? So, yeah. Yeah, well. Didn't crackle or budge or anything, huh? No. I want to say it doesn't want to do much here. Where do you cut it? Well, wherever I can cut it. I could try that chisel and just drive it in this uh, split. And if it don't move, then we'll just have to figure something else out. Yeah, I suppose we could just cut it on that side too and pull it through, huh? That might be easier. Yep, well, I think that we might have to just cut this thing off and then take it somewhere else and 
extract it. Because <clears throat> that just doesn't work. Let's see if we can spread it a little bit with this chisel. Well, I'm not exactly sure if we're going to even be reusing this coupling or not. But regardless, we do need to use it right now to get a measurement on this new shaft assembly. And I don't think that's going to do anything, Matt. Doesn't seem like it did. All right, let's just uh, let's get it out of here. Oh, wait a minute. It moved. Fool Ooh. you, didn't I? <laughs> you fell for it, Matt. You think you're so smart because you can stand straight up? <laughs> Be quiet. Now, I was standing over there so proudly looking at Dad thinking he could stand next to me and stand straight up. I can stand straight up if I put my heads between the beam. <laughs> my head between the beam. Sometimes it's handy being tall. Sometimes it's handy being short. There's a kid on that. You like that? Yeah, it looks good. it folks. Alrighty. Okay, well if that doesn't fit through the other side then I guess I'll just get the chainsaw and we'll just cut a little hole right there. <laughs> Might have to, we'll root all this stuff out anyways and get it all cleaned up, huh? Yep. Just need to like get it, get it rigged up good with some, you know, some good chases and stuff, so yeah. we can run stuff to the lab or whatever through here if we want. I guess we can actually just measure the shaft now, couldn't we? No. We have to put the coupling on the tail shaft. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's what this is all about. That's right. Yeah. I'll slide right out of my hands. Okay. That is heavy, though. Got it. Got it. Did it, hon. Oh, oh, look at that. Perfectly good shaft that we cut in half. Good grief. But the other end was garbage. <laughs> yeah, you'd never know it looking in here, would you? Yeah. So, next task is to get this out of that. It should actually come out of there pretty easy. All right, so what's the plan here? Uh, Are we bringing our friend home? Yeah. Bottle Jack. Think it'll work? Bottle Jack? No. Hydraulic pipe bender. How's it look? Looks good. Alright guys, well, we gotta get this shaft out of this coupling, so... Seeing how everybody loves our engineering skills and our lack of proper tools, we thought we'd just show you how we use our combination hydraulic pipe bender slash hydraulic press. <laughs> Luckily for us, that fits right in there with just enough clearance. So this thing's pretty hammered, it's pretty beat up. We've bent some uh, pretty oversized pipe with that and uh, even stainless stock for our uh, same, same hook. That's right, what was that? One inch, right? Or inch and a quarter? Inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter stainless solid down stock. Yeah, so um, that's been one tough bender right there. <laughs> We've put it to the test a few times and it's never failed us. So I think we'll just throw a pipe clamp on here. Keep it from spreading. Yeah, maybe one on each side, huh? Couldn't hurt. Yep, it'd be nice to have a hydraulic press, but see. I've been saying I'm gonna build one one of these days. I just haven't gotten to it. We'll see if this is enough to move this thing. Can 
that. Now I'm just going to take a scribe and put a little mark down here so I can see whether we're moving or not. Huh? See if it moves or not, I guess, huh? So we did, uh, just gave this with a tap with the hammer yesterday. From that end, just like a couple of blows and it moved. So that was a good sign. That was before we left the boat and then uh, saturated. Gave it a good saturation with some uh, WD-40, so hopefully it'll go. If not, we'll have to maybe take it down to the plant and have them stick it in their press, but there she goes. Easy. Yeah. Almost too easy. It didn't even pop. Nope. Just very a, hard. Just a very light pop. <laughs> So sometimes you don't have the right tools, but you'll have something that will work. You just have to think outside the box. Yeah, a little improvision, right? What were you waiting for your dial indicator for this? Or? Yeah, so I could put this on the tail shaft and then just see how much run out there is on it. But it's really kind of irrelevant. I mean, regardless if this if this fits up fine on there, um, we can go ahead and get the, the shaft ordered. We can measure it and get the shaft ordered. And if there is like excessive run out, then we're just gonna have to get the boat pulled and pull that tail shaft and, and then they'll put the coupling back on the tail shaft in a lathe, tighten it down, and then they can face the bottom of it. And then it'll be running concentric with the shaft. And there we go. It's not so heavy now. Yep, so there we go. Looks like somebody had been on there with the pipe wrench a few times. <laughs> so yeah, I guess we'll get this coupler cleaned up then. Yeah, well, I'll probably get it down to the boat and put it on. Oh, yeah. And get that measurement so the guys can hopefully get started tomorrow on building us a new shaft assembly. Cool. Alrighty, guys. What you got there, Dad? Got a holder for a dial indicator and a new dial indicator that just came in the mail this morning. So yeah, we're waiting on this part so we can measure the run out on this coupler. So the coupling. So I guess the task this morning is to uh, take the coupling that made it the intermediate shaft to the reduction gear and put it on the stainless tail shaft, which is at the aft end of the boat. And uh, then we'll set up the style indicator and see how much run out we have on it. Um, so we basically want the, the shaft and, and the flanges, the coupling flange on the shaft to be as true and concentric to each other as possible. So it just runs smoothly and there isn't a bunch of vibration or any issues with bearing wear or anything like that. So once we get that fit, we can um, measure the overall length of that that shaft assembly, and then we can uh, give our guy a call down at Olympic Propeller, and they're going to make us a new one, made in America. Sweet. Yeah. So this is just a little dial indicator so um, it mounts on the end of this 
this uh this is a mag base right here so what we'll do is we'll position this to where it's against uh, the shaft like this and then we can spin the shaft and we'll see how much run out or how much side to side movement it is and see if it's running concentric and then when we put the flange on the end say this is the face of the flange and the shaft is this way we'll put it here and once it's tightened up and everything we'll put it there and then we can turn the shaft and once again see if there's movement this way or that way that it's basically out of um, line with the shaft we want it to run as true as possible because it's going to mate up to the next shaft and you don't want a bunch of wobble and stuff in there so now that we have this we can get busy on that get some stuff mucked out gotta get that shaft out of there i was wondering if we should just pick it as one piece right now I'm tempted just to cut it up to make it easy, but I was also thinking if we pick it one piece is fine, one piece, then we can get a feel of how the new one needs to go back in. Mm, true. And uh, just kind of what a good process is going to be for that. Yeah, it'll be a hair longer, but maybe yeah. like a foot and a half. Yeah, about that. Um, yeah, but at least it'll give us an idea. Yeah, of, of where to put our pick points and mm -hmm. and uh, how we want to go about doing that. Yeah, it's a good idea. Dry run, dry run on the trash shaft. <laughs> dry run in reverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Last thing we're gonna want to do is like drop that new one in there and risk bending it. That would be catastrophic. That's gonna be a expensive part right there. So it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get to it. All right, just getting rigged to lift this old intermediate shaft out. Um, got a chain hoist over there. Just so gonna get this slung right here and start picking it up. We'll just like <clears throat> support the scent here so it doesn't drag. We could just chop this up and pull it out easy, but it's just kind of a trial run of how we're gonna get the new one back in here. Um, obviously it's no big deal if we damage this one. I certainly don't want to have any incidences with a, a new shaft, so that's kind of what we got going on here. Ready? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat>
pivot. It should just be able to teeter totter. If you bring it this way, there's like enough loose here to, and this is above that. So that should be good, right? Yeah. Here you go. You could. Uh, Just uh, lift it and pull it that way so it doesn't drag on this too much. So, um, next task is to get this coupler on here. Now that our compressor's all charged up, and we're gonna clean up this end real quick. Make sure there's no burrs or anything on it. All right, that wasn't too bad. We'll put the end of this coupler on. Coupler on the tail shaft. Now the bilge shaft alley pumped out. 
Yeah. Heading up around here is kind of a disaster area. Better now. Demo and stuff tends to do that. Yeah. Nasty, rusty junk. Yeah. This is uh, all greasy and nasty in here. Thankfully, T got that all mucked out in Ock Bay. Yeah, yeah, that was good of them to do. Yeah. So, big job. So it was really just rusty water to speak of. So, yeah, I got that all cleaned out. Just, uh, oh, I just nipped out these uh, old grease lines. Everything's coming out of here. Um, just fixing to climb back in this uh, kind of lazaret slash tankage area, I guess, and see if we can't close the valve to this port side fuel tank and then uh, you know, poke a hole in this big red line over here and drain this fuel out of it. And get that emptied out, get that trimmed out of there, and then um, remove that water line. Yeah, that water line. That float, float alarm, float switch. Everything, it's just a mess, we wanna get it all cleaned up and... Start over. Yep, start over, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's where we are on this, folks. It's uh, gotten a little more complicated than we originally anticipated. But it's about, so that's to be expected. Yeah. Lots and lots of interest and comments and people wondering where we're at on it and when we're gonna be fishing it. <laughs> yeah. And the answer right now is not this year. <laughs> so, yeah, we're making progress, but. What do they it, say? It future us will be fishing one day? Yeah, future us will be fishing. And what we're trying to avoid is problems for future us. That's the biggest thing about taking the time and trying to do this right now. Yeah. Is that we'll be avoiding duplicating work later on or unforeseen problems. So kind of important to take a little bit of time right now and, uh, and try and work through this stuff as best as possible. Even though we have to get this stuff ordered and it'll, it'll be probably three weeks out for our intermediate shaft. Our plan right now is to get that one made. Um, and in the meantime, we'll start fabricating all the, the covers for the shaft alley. Um, laminating the new bulkhead and that can go in in pieces for the most part we can work our way towards the center and we leave that open and then once that intermediate shows up we can drop it in and get it in place and we can finish the, the bulkhead um, we can start buttoning up the major part of the shaft alley it's going to be in several pieces so um, we can start installing those pieces of a shaft alley. We have all the sumps to do. So it's not like this is holding up the project at this point. And then once that's in there and set in place, we can put in the bulkhead. So I think what I'll do is I'll just snap a couple pictures of this for him. Um, and then he's just got a, a good kind of overview of it all. I'll make a quick sketch and send that off to him and see what he says, huh? Yep.